On the same context, in, in order to you know maintain your data integrity or in order to uh, reduce the uh, wastage given for duplicate cases and all. So there comes one more concept called temporary cases. Temporary cases are something which are not actually stored in the database, but still they would be available on the clipboard. Let's, let me give you a simple scenario. Suppose you have ordered, or you have placed an order with Amazon. Okay? And until you receive it, you will be tracking it multiple times. You would check where it has reached, at what time it is available. You will be checking it a multiple times. So for each tracking order, should I create, should I create a transaction for it? You are just tracking it. So I can have those kind of transactions as temporary cases. Okay, temporary cases do not have a transaction ID. They do not have a unique identifier. They do not have a case ID. But they are just stored in the clipboard until unless maybe some condition is met. Okay, Again, talking in terms of uh, customer here. Suppose. Assume you you uh, you want to get your new address updated on the banking portal. So what you'll do, you'll call the customer service and you'll say that I would like to update my address. Please take the details. Okay, so you will give them your details, and by surprise, whatever details you have, given, they are already available on the banking portal. All this transaction. Ideally, it, it has to be a case instance, right? I mean, talking as a business scenario, it is a business transaction that you have carried out. Ideally, all of this has to go and sit in your database. But, but as the address is the same, the purpose is served. This is converted to a temporary case. So, until unless there is an appropriate situation we will have the cases to be temporary. Only after your conditions are met, you will persist or you will have case details being stored on the databases. Why are we doing this is to save a lot of space and also to make sure systems performance is high. And, and again, there is no point having all the cases as temporary cases. Then it means there's nothing on your DB. Everything is on the clipboard itself. Again, that is also purposeless. Right? All cases should not be temporary throughout. There should be some cutoff where you decide, okay, at this point, I will convert my temporary case to a permanent case. So that is done using your persist case shape okay until unless some condition is met i will make it as temporary once it is met only then i will turn it to be a permanent case just to give a simple example here now we design the duplicate case search okay? see until unless this case is certain not duplicate i will design it as a temporary case and once I identify that it is no longer a duplicate, only then I, whenever I design a case as a temporary case, I will no longer get any case ID. But how do I do this? Where should I do this? So I don't have a separate shape here, but I should be doing it on the settings of my case type. So how do we do this? Is so I'll go to my case settings. So 
Oh, earlier the temporary case setting would just be available directly on the availability option here. We used to get it directly on the case level settings, but probably I think from 8.5, we, we are having it on the, you know, the rule directly, your case type rule. So I'll go back to my app explorer. My PY start case is there. So that's where I will have my case as a temporary case. In case type rule, my process. Let me open this P by default. So here on my by default, I've gone to the advanced tab where yes, your query case. Okay. Now I would like to have my case as and once you define it as temporary, you can no longer have any routing associated with it. So if one operator works on it. Let me save it, we'll see what happens. Okay, so now when I run a transaction, oh, sorry. So let me refresh it. See now, even though I moved on to the second stage, I still don't see any case ID being generated because your case is a temporary case. So, so I would like to just proceed and see yet I see any case ID being generated. So the case is going to be a temporary case finish the entire transaction with just a temporary case, right? I need to store this at, at least at some point of time. So that's where we use the persist case shape. Once you make sure that your um, transaction has reached a particular point where you, you don't want uh, it to be a temporary case any longer, so that's where you decide and you can have your persist case shape. Now, in this scenario, once I decide my case is no longer a duplicate, I would like to persist it. So for that, I would like to go into more automations. 
and there is a yes so here is my persist case so this converts a temporary case into a permanent instance and this has to be immediate right and there's no configuration to make but this has to be immediate to my duplicate case so once i identify it's no longer a duplicate i would like to persist it let's see this scenario now So let's assume I'll give some random number here. So means this is no longer a duplicate. So here I'm, in, I'm giving in entirely different details here. So my case, even though it is currently a temporary case, we will see what happens. Yes, see a case ID coming up and it is through the duplicate case search and the system also converted it to a permanent case and i see this now let's type the negative scenario i'll give in the exact same details now okay so the case is temporary so no case id and it says it could be a potential duplicate with respect to all of these if i close this as a duplicate then the case just remains as a temporary case there is no case id generated so you are saving a lot of space with respect to your database yes so likewise you can have your own specific requirements on when it has to turn into a permanent case and when it, it has to be a duplicate case search, right? And again, just adding one more point here is the system is not going to decide that this is a duplicate. It will only show you some suggestions saying it might be a potential duplicate. So the choice again lies with the human interaction only, right? A person who's responsible for looking at these things, he will decide whether he can proceed with the transaction or should he resolve the case right so i mean these two are like very uh simple things yet a bit tricky both the aspects of temporary case duplicate case search and persist case shapes 